In this video, we are going to learn how to identify quadratic data. Now, the way this works is we're going to use differences. And a very key thing for differences is that your x is always changed by the same amount every time from left to right. So here it's always going up by 1 for both these sets of data. Now, on the left, we have a quadratic quadratic data following 3x squared plus 1. And on the right, we have a linear data following 3x plus 1. Now, the way you calculate differences is you, ch you check from one point to the next how much it goes up or down. So from 13 to 4, it goes down 9. From 4 to 1, it goes down 3. From 1 to 4, it goes up 3. And then from 4 to 13, it goes up 9. If I did it over here, we go down 3, down 3, down 3 down three. You'll notice here that they become constant. So if I did this again, it's all be zeros. So we say that when the first differences are constant and not equal to zero, that is linear data. Now what are second differences, which I'm about to get into to describe quadratic data, is if I take those dip first differences I just calculated and I did it again from negative nine to three, negative three is up six, negative three to three is up six, and three to nine is up six, that is, those are a constant second differences, and that is what's key for identifying quadratic data. So first differences are when you do it the first time, and you can do it as many times as you like, but ha it can't be equal to zero. Once you're, they're constant and equal to zero, you're actually in a different um, realm of what that could actually mean. So as soon as you get them constant and not equal to zero, you can identify what type of data you're dealing with. So for down here, let's determine each data represents perfect quadratic data. And again, if the second differences are constant, it's perfect quadratic data. If they're close to constant, then there's probably quadratic data, but it's not perfect. But now let's look at this, this first set on the left. From 6 to 12, it goes up 6. From 12 to 22, it goes up 10. From 22 to 36, it goes up 14. Then 36 to 54 goes up 18. Then 54 to 76 is up 22. Then 76 to 102 is up 26, which is not constant yet, so I'm going to keep on going. 6 to 10 is up 4. 10 to 14 is up 4, and I'm starting to see a pattern here. 14 to 18 up 4. 18 to 22 up 4. 22 to 26 up 4. So yes, this represents perfect quadratic data because of how it's completely constant. And let's try out the next example. Here we have from negative 18 to negative 1, it goes up 7. From negative 1 to 0, it goes up 1. From 0 to 1, it goes up 1. From 1 to 8, it goes up 7. 8 to 27 would be up 19. And then 27 to 24 would be up, so make sure I don't get this math wrong, 37. All right, so that's not constant yet, so we have to do it again. So 7 to 1 goes down 6. 1 to 1 goes nowhere, so 0. 1 to 7 goes up 6. 7 to 19 goes up 12, and 19 to 37 goes up 18. So still not constant, so this is not perfect quadratic data. But if I did it one more time, I would see it goes up 6, up 6, up 6, and up 6. So that's the third differences are constant, and this actually represents perfect cubic da da data which is like x to the third value. So even though we didn't get what we needed to for linear or quadratic, it's still useful to know because it can even tell us about other types of functions. And that is how you identify quadratic data.